Good evening, every, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We're going to start tonight's webinar um, about Delaware State University. Before we do, um, I just want to say welcome to the students, parents, caregivers, educators, everyone who's on the call tonight. My name is Karen Keegan, and I'm from the Delaware Department of Education. I'm here along with my colleagues from the University of Delaware Institute for Public Administration, Kelly Sheritz and Chris Kelly, who are helping uh, to run this program with us, and they're running the webinar tonight, so thanks to them for being on the call as well. Just a couple of housekeeping um, pieces of information. Um, all of you will be muted tonight, and none of your videos will be showing. We encourage you to ask as many questions as you have. Just put them in the chat and the Delaware State University team will be answering them throughout the presentation and also at the end of the presentation. So keep your questions coming. We'll make sure we get to them. Um, the recording, the, the session is being recorded tonight. And so you can you know, watch parts of it again or see it again or share it with your friends. It'll be posted on the DelawareStudentSuccess.org website that you see on the screen there um, in a couple of days. So all of the past webinars are posted there. Can we go to the next screen? So something I want to tell you about two different things. Um, we just launched a texting campaign from the Department of Education. This is um, a, a program where you can text in, text the word success if you'd like to join to 302-492-2092. High school students can join, parents, caregivers can join. Um, and we will send you updates and information on things you might want to think about doing for planning for your next steps after high school. Also, we will remind you about these upcoming webinars um, as they're coming up. And a really cool thing that you can do is you can text us with questions. Um, if you have questions along the way about applications or next steps or your financial aid process or whatever you need help with, we will answer your, your texts. Um, as soon as we can. And the team that's on this call tonight, um, myself, Kelly, Chris, we will be the ones answering you back. Can we go to the next slide? So these are the list of webinars that we, some of them we've had, some of them are still coming up. And I just wanna call these out because there's a lot of interesting topics with students, most students being remote um, right now, we wanted to make sure that you were able to get this information. You will also get some of this from your schools, but this is just another way for you and your families to learn about um, your options after you graduate from high school. So the first couple that we've had um, are already posted on the website. The first one was about how to pick a career if you don't know what you want to do. Um, we did a basic college admissions uh, session with what are college admissions representatives looking for? Delaware Tech and the University of Delaware did presentations um, last week. And just earlier this week, we had a session on writing your college admissions essay. What, how do you have a strong essay? What is it that representatives from admissions departments are looking for? So tonight, of course, is Delaware State University. And then next week, we have a session on financial aid and scholarships. So how to pay for college, that's a really important one that's being presented by my colleague in the higher education office. And then um, also upcoming uh, next week is Goldie Beacom. Wesley's also presenting next week. And then a little bit later on, we have a couple of sessions on the military. So if you're thinking about joining the military, it would be good to learn what different branches can offer career and educational opportunities. Some people might be thinking about apprenticeships or industry certifications. All of these options can provide really good jobs. It's just finding what fits with your interests and what you want to do as a career. So um, keep these in mind. You have to register for, all, for any of them, just like you did tonight. Um, and you can do all of that at the DelawareStudentSuccess.org website. Um, also on that website, our partners, um, Stand By Me, is uh, an organization that we work with. And they are experts in financial aid and scholarships. They can help you with FAFSA completion. They're having a lot of financial aid sessions many times during the week. They are free. They're all listed on our website calendar. So please use them to help you through this process. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Pia Stokes from the Delaware State University Admissions Office. 
Hi, thank you, Karen. Good evening. Um, as, as Karen stated, I am Ms. Pia Stokes, one of our Associate Directors for the Office of Admissions at Delaware State University. Uh, while my colleague is pulling up our presentation um, for the university, I just want to say thank you for joining us this evening, taking the time out of your Thursday evening. Um, the week is almost up, so we're glad that you can join us in this manner. Even though uh, we would love to have been speaking to you in person, especially in uh, relation to the college application month, definitely make sure that you guys are paying attention. Use the text to chat features because it's an it's amazing. I wish I would have had something like that while we were in school so that I could communicate um, more quickly, I guess you can say, to get more resources that were available. So we'll jump right in. Uh, my colleague, Miss Holden, you'll probably see her in the chat. Um, if she could pull up our PowerPoint presentation. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, sorry for the delay, so we'll go ahead and get started. So I'll go ahead and play our very short um, commercial that hopefully you guys are able to hear on your end. So I'll go ahead and play it now. Hopefully, you guys were able to hear and see the commercial. I know as soon as you go to our website, uh, you've probably been watching things on TV uh, while we've been on lockdown in the pandemic. Um, you've seen that commercial as well. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoy. So we'll just jump right in. So one thing that you guys were big on visuals, right? So we were, a, were in, an institution founded in 1891 as Delaware State College. Um, of course, we're now Delaware State University. So if you can take a comparison to both pictures, um, I know students like to kind of, you know, giggle a lot at this, but the very first graduating class of Delaware State University is at the top right. So you can see in black and white our first graduating class. So, um, you know, interesting clothing, um, very different from what we wear today, but um, versus uh, ver the bottom picture. So it's excitement. It's pre-COVID. That's why no one has on masks, by the way. Um, but, you know, taking selfies, it's diverse. That is exactly what you'll see on campus um, in various aspects of campus uh, with the organizations that we have on campus, which are over 100 or student run organizations. We have, of course, your Greek or Greek lettered organizations down to the specialized organizations, students who are interested in dance, who are interested in um, public speaking. I, I think we have a, a gamut of, of organizations that pretty much meet probably every need that you'll possibly have um, to fit on campus or your level of interest. Um, we always recommend for students who you, you don't have to have to have any experience in a lot of different areas, but it's great to just kind of get your feet wet while you're in college and join different organizations and groups and be a part of what the university has to, has to offer. Um, so I also must mention the very top right picture, our first graduating class is standing in front of Lockerman Hall. That is a building that is still standing on campus today. And to preserve the wholesomeness of the building, we only allow it uh, to be open one time a year for maybe a two hour period for students to visit. You can visit the entire building. Um, because again, we don't want to have it just open to just anyone and we want to be able to monitor that because it is, it, a, it is a very old building. So we want to make sure that we keep it intact, right? Um, so on our website, we have something called a view book. Um, there's a, the picture or, or the wording for the, our informational guide. Um, going right to our website, you can actually see what our view book looks like. Um, I don't know if it'll let me. <laughs> go into it here. Um, I don't think it will. But in our informational booklet, I highly recommend you going to our website and taking a look at that. It's a quick digital version of our a quick snapshot of the university. It tells you all of our 40 plus major, 
majors, 30 plus minors. It tells you a little bit more about our aviation program and our 100% job placement for all of our students um, since the program is existence. It also lets you know that we are division one for all of our NCAA sports down to the cost of attendance and different manners and resources in which you can be successful as a student. So definitely make sure, I, I believe that um, Delaware Student Success does have it posted on their website as well. Definitely take a look. It's a great way to see some facts and figures and some real data and just a quick snapshot of the university. So next, so what you see in front of you are our rankings. So we are actually ranked number three amongst all public HBCUs in America. Uh, with a quick quote from our president, Dr. Tony Allen. And this, the next one below it, we're actually extremely proud of. Uh, we were ranked number 13. Now we're ranked number 11 amongst all HBCUs, historically black colleges or universities in the country. What does that mean? That means that we are, we put our students first. That means we care about the needs of our students. We, we make sure that we're providing the resources that they need to be successful. Just like, again, these are real students in these pictures. We literally, grab them and say, hey, you're in class, class is ending, can you, can you come for a photo shoot? Um, so we're not, this is not a fake, you know, actor in, in the pictures. No, they're real students. Actually, one of them uh, is one of my tour guides that actually worked for me. So, um, so there, it's, it's, that's the vibrant feel of campus. So you want to make sure that you're aware that, hey, what's going on on Delaware State University's campus? That quick snapshot of our rankings right there is exactly what's happening. And it's a, just a bit about what we're about. Now, College Application Month. So we are in the middle of College Application Month as we speak. So the official dates for College Application Month for our state are October the 12th through November the 20th. Now we, along with a few other institutions, I believe Delaware State, I'm sorry, University of Delaware and Wilmington University, we are actually waiving application fees, not just through those dates, we're, we actually start in October the 1st and run through November the 30th. So any high school, graduating high school senior that attends an institution or a high school in the state of Delaware, we're waiving application fees to uh, all of our institutions of higher learning in the state. So when you go to our website, so you go to complete our admissions applications, we are waiving them for you. So any seniors who are present and watching or reviewing, make sure that you're paying attention to that. Um, this is a pretty interesting time because we, the, the Department of Education for our state has been remarkable and amazing with putting this on for the past several years, a few years actually. Um, and it's, it's, they've definitely spearheaded this and other states are starting to pick up on it. Uh, Merlin, you know, District of Columbia, doing a college application month a week or something like that. So definitely kudos to our Department of Education there for spearheading some, something like this because it gives you an opportunity as a student to make sure that you're applying to your in-state schools just in case you want to go to out of state, but you know you want to make sure that you have an option here for in state, as well as maybe you want to stay in state and you want to make sure that hey, I want to I want to see what my options are for every institution in our home state. So make sure that you're applying. Um, we'll go into our admissions applications, uh, admissions requirements next for Delaware State, but definitely just wanted to make sure, just in case you haven't heard. Uh, from your counselors and your teachers, maybe even your parents, and even on here tonight, we are in the middle of college application month for our state. So please make sure you're taking advantage of that. Um, I know a lot of students wait until May or maybe April to say, hey, now I want to apply. No, apply now. Um, you can start to send those additional pieces like transcripts as such um, a little later on, but definitely complete at least our admissions application, which is listed on our website. So next, what are our incoming freshman admissions requirements? So first, you have to go directly to our website and apply online. You can do this from your tablet, your phone, your computer, any device that you have that has our website or you can access the internet. And our website says it right there, desu.edu backslash apply now. You go there, I think probably on every web page of our website has the word apply. When you see that, just go ahead and click on that apply and the application will come up. You'll create a special account specific to you and that you can complete that portion there. Now it says $35 application fee, but of course for college application month that is waived. You won't, as long as you put in your high school, which is in the state of Delaware, you won't even see the payment screen pop up. So we're doing that specifically for you guys for this particular college application month timeframe. The next thing you're gonna to need to do is submit your, your additional documents. So one official document you'll need to submit is your high school transcript. 
uh, for the time being for incoming freshmen or high school seniors, um, you can submit your high school transcript unofficially. So what does that mean? That means we'll give you an email address. I know, I believe Ms. Holden can actually drop that in the chat um, where you can actually have your counselor or you can send your high school transcript as a PDF attachment. So make sure that of course it has your GPA, your grades that we can actually review and see. You can actually email that directly to us there as well as your SAT or your ACT score. Um, send those to us and those are the official, official required documents that we review and take a look at for your admissions. Now, academically, all right, academic requirements. So you need to have at least a C or better on the 19 core course requirements. So those are your typical college preparatory uh, requirements that you have for high school. So your four Englishes, your three maths, your two sciences, um, those courses that you have. So you need to have at least a C or better in those courses. You need a GPA requirement of at least a 2.0 cumulative GPA, not just your semester or marking period. So that means your entire time in high school, your cumulative GPA, no less than a 2.0 on a 4.0 scale. SAT requirements needs to be at least an 800 total score and your ACT at least a 17 composite score on your ACTs. Now, for those students out there who have said, hey, because of the pandemic, one, I was not able to take an SAT or an ACT course, or they're canceling dates or things as such. Or for the student who says, hey, I only took it one time, a standardized test, but I wasn't able to retake it for a better score. Um, we do have the te a test optional policy in which we have been able to implement. So for those of you who are interested in being admitted through our test optional policy, you can actually just shoot us a quick email um, and our admissions email will be at, at the end. I believe Ms. Holden may be dropping it in the chat for you guys as well. Shoot us an email and say, hey, I did an application for admissions, but I don't have test scores. Can I just be admitted test optional with my high school transcript? Um, as long as you're admissible, so you have that at least that 2.0 and 19 core course units, we can uh, review your admissions application for our test optional piece. Now, another piece as well, for those of you who say, hey, oh, the other caveat with the test optional piece is if you are admitted into our institution uh, through our test optional policy, we cannot offer you at this time merit scholarships. So that merit scholarships are scholarships just based on your GPA and your test score. We can still award you Inspire if you have at least a 2.75 GPA. So for those of you who are in that boat, either you haven't taken the standardized tests or your scores aren't quite what our minimum requirements are, you can request to be reviewed and considered for test optional with our university. If that is the case, like I said, just give us a call or shoot us an email to request this and then we'll review you when it comes to that. Now, if later on in the year after you're admitted, um, test optional, right? Um, if let's say you take the SATs or the ACTs later on in your senior year, you can actually submit those scores to us and then we can reevaluate your admissions application to see if then you, you meet our requirements for full admission so that you can be awarded and considered for merit-based scholarships. So we always say it's never too late and don't feel as if, oh my gosh, the pandemic happened. I haven't been able to take my test. That's okay. Things happen. We're working around and we're not going to penalize you as a student. Uh, we're, we want to make sure that we keep those doors open and keep those lines of communication open as well. So when in doubt, just contact our office so that we can just kind of walk you through that process as well or you can pop a question in the chat and we can answer it for you this evening. So financial assistance, assistance this is big. So um, we always recommend, or actually it's required for, um, if you're using any form of federal financial aid or if I need financial assistance, you will have to complete the FAFSA. So the website of course is fafsa.ed.gov. When you go to that website, you and a parent or guardian um, do need to complete that as well in order for the financial aid department of the school in which you're looking to attend um, so that they can award you uh, financial assistance. So um, that is another thing that needs to be on file if you're a student who wants to be able to utilize work study, which means you work on campus while you're attending and get paid for that as well. That's what work study is essentially. Um, also, we have something called a net price calculator on our website. I, I believe a couple of other schools have this as well. This is a great tool 
before you even complete an, an application for admissions, you can actually go to our website uh, at desu.edu backslash NPC and actually see, it's gonna ask you several questions so that it can find out kind of your, uh, which are just different things about you so that it can then at the end tell you, hey, you know, Steve Smith or whatever your name may be, um, it can tell you, you qualify for this amount of money or that amount of money in financial assistance. Um, and then it can actually shoot you an email to say, send you those results so that you can review that with your parents as well. Um, so that's an amazing tool that you can get right from our website. It is free. You don't even have to complete an online admissions application to be able to utilize a tool like that. Um, and just in case our school code, if you do do the FAFSA, um, when you put us down, you can type in our name or you can put in our school code, which is 001428. Um, now, you do not have to, well, we always recommend, I think you can put up to seven or 10 schools on the FAFSA. Put, put the schools that you're really thinking of going to. You don't have to put just one school. You never know what's going to change or maybe what can happen. So just make sure that you're putting the schools on your FAFSA application that you are truly interested in attending. Inspire. I know I spoke on this very briefly. Um, so Inspire Scholarship, what is that, right? So thank, thankfully for our state, they have uh, awarded us or given us the funding to award the Inspire Scholarship for the past several years. Um, so what are the requirements, right? You need to be a high school senior, Delaware, or graduate from a Delaware high school, have a cumulative GPA of at least a 2.75 GPA, demonstrate good conduct, complete your FAFSA, which we just talked about, and enroll at Delaware State University immediately following graduation. So that means, one, you can't take a semester off. You can't take a gap year. You, if you graduate in May or June, you have to immediately come into Delaware State for that fall semester and be accepted, of course. Um, that's really big because I know, especially now with the pandemic, that, that has been a lot of conversations that we've had with students. They want to take a gap year. They want to take a semester off. Uh, but unfortunately, we need to keep in mind, unless it's, it's an insinuating circumstance, you, in order to be awarded and receive our merit scholarships, as well as the Inspire scholarship, you, that is one of the qualifications that you do immediately come into Delaware State as an accepted student for the fall semester. Now, there are a couple of insinuating circumstances. One, is that you, let's say you enlist in the military and your um, basic training starts and you'll be away for the fall semester. All you'll need to do is send us an email or provide documentation to us of your orders so that we can kind of put your admissions application and your scholarship information on pulse. Um, and when you return back from your orders or maybe where you may be stationed, then you can resume your academics and we can resume with your merit scholarships. The same thing for any extenuating circumstance for health or maybe an emergency. When in doubt, just call us. Um, just your basic, hey, I got a cold. I can't come to orientation. That is not an emergency. I, we don't want you feeling sick, not at all. Um, but you want to keep in mind what designates as, a, as an emergency, a true emergency. But again, when in doubt, just contact our office and we'll specify that for you. Now, at the very bottom, community service hours. We're big on community service at the institution. So you wanna make sure that you are aware that that is a part of you receiving the Inspire Scholarship and most scholarships, to be honest with you, that we offer is that you do perform community service hours. So the Inspire Scholarship is very easy to meet those requirements. You can probably meet them in one day with the amount of events that we have on campus uh, in regard to community service. So we wanna make sure that you are aware that you will need to give back. We're giving to you, so you definitely need to give back. So our early bird. So if we have any juniors and seniors who are watching, reviewing, or listening, our early bird program is pretty much our dual enrollment option. So it gives you as a junior or a senior in high school, the ability to earn college credit on Delaware State's campus. You need to have at least a 2.5 cumulative GPA, but if you have a 3.0, um, GPA, your tuition is actually waived for the courses that you take. Now, you can take up to six credit hours per fall semester and six credit hours for spring semester. So that means you can knock out a half, a half of a freshman year pretty much within your junior, um, within your junior year or your senior year. So that's an amazing opportunity for you to take advantage of, especially for you guys who have over a 3.0 cumulative GPA in high school and are juniors or seniors, 
um, and kind of you can get that ball rolling to start taking college level courses. So if you are interested in our early bird program, just go right to our website, complete the free application. And it's not just free because it's college application month, but we do waive the application fee for our early bird interested students. Um, and then submit a letter of recommendation from your parents, as well as a counselor at school or your principal. Uh, we'll review it. And if admitted, then we'll reach out to you to talk about your academic courses and what classes you can take, what you're interested in taking. Um, and then you can start that fall. And if you're uh, if you're in the boat where you're a junior, you can actually take four full semesters um, of courses and be ready once you graduate high school, and you'll be ahead of the game. So global reach, right? So we have a lot of partnerships with institutions outside and, and countries um, outside of the US, of course. So some of them are listed. So China, South Korea, Poland, France. Um, unfortunately, we have not been able to send our students abroad or have students on campus because of the pandemic. But hopefully when we open back up, things will be back to normal. So we've had to do that in the virtual format. But we have those agreements there because it gives us and other students in those countries the opportunity to experience Delaware State University here in the US as well as abroad. So as you can see, again, these are real students who have been a part of our program. Um, these, these are not paid actors or however they say it in the commercial. Um, these are our real students. Um, and then at the bottom, as you guys can see, we have amazing opportunities and, and cooperative degree programs with Ch Chang Chun and Ningbo University. So it gives these students an opportunity to actually earn two degrees, one with Delaware State University, one with their institution at the same time. So I will tell you, they are probably doing double the work. Um, so it is, the, please don't think they're, you know, they're getting off easy. They're definitely not. Um, they're, they're, they're working of really vigorous programs. Our DSU instructors are actually um, teaching those courses. They typically would be doing that in person, but with the pandemic, they've had to do that virtually. Um, but it's been amazing, an amazing opportunity for our students to take part in these programs as well. So it gives you the opportunity, if you're interested in attending, to participate in such opportunities. Now, we have a statewide reach. So 10, of, if you can see in front of you, 10,000 students, that's our reach. So between alumni, students, and staff, we're reaching out to you as mentors, mentees. So as you can see, between the three counties that we have, our breakdown in percentages with students and alumni. So we're there, we're available. We have our main campus, of course, which is in Dover, Delaware, and in Kent County. And we have a campus in Newcastle County and Sussex County. So if you need us, we're there. That's the biggest aspect that we're trying to convey. And here's the other piece. Our enrollment is up 40% since 2009, whereas enrollment from not only historically black colleges and universities are down 9%, but then college enrollment overall in the U.S. is down 5.3%. But we are continuing to rise with our enrollment. Why? Because our slogan is, it all matters, and it does. We take the opportunity to learn who our students are and what resources they need to provide. We really give that hands-on approach as from, from the moment we start kind of communicating with you until the time you graduate and beyond. We want to know what can we do to make sure that your needs are met to be successful as a student. And we're continuing to rise and, and continuing to climb with our enrollment. Uh, we are in the process of acquiring Wesley College, so that's pretty interesting. Um, hopefully that should be done sometime next year. So that's another opportunity to provide additional programming academically and resources for students. So research, for any students out there who are interested in research, or if you're interested in STEM, this is big and huge for you. On our campus, we have had and will continue to have grant funding and research opportunities for not only our faculty and staff, but students get the opportunity to build their research portfolio by doing research on, on various topics such as cancer, Alzheimer's, uh, NASA. NASA's on our campus a lot trying to recruit our students and performing research. And if you go to social media, our social media pages have been, has had an uptick in, in pretty much sharing what our research that our instructors and faculty are participating in as well as our students. So if you want to take a look at that, definitely make sure you do that. Um, as well as our neuroscience, I'd be remiss if I did not mention um, our partnership, our grants. There were four, 14, $14 million. That's huge. 
That's that that's huge. Not one thousand, but like for that that amount of money that's been put in a partnership to complete research with neuroscience is big. So if you're a STEM student and you're interested in research, there's an amazing opportunity right here for you on our campus to to participate in such research and continuing to grow with our research portfolio. So as you can see in front of you, we have a hundred, over a hundred uh, faculty and staff submitting research proposals that they can do right here on campus that our students can partake in as well. And we are among the top third among 900 funded institutions to be performing such research on our campus. So again, as we say at all times, it all matters, that slogan that you see in the top left. And you'll hear that a lot. So I'll probably say that about five more times in the presentation. So record retention. So as you can see at the, in, in the left hand side, I've had students ask me, so what's your retention rate? What's your retention rate, right? Um, they may not even know what it means, but they're asking that question, right? So that means that how are we retaining our students? Are we graduating our students when they matriculate and come to Delaware State? Yes, we are. Our retention average is about a little over 70% uh, for a five-year average, whereas the HBCU national average is a little over 60%. So that means our students are coming to Delaware State and graduating within that five-year mark from Delaware State University. So we're, you're not, the students are not just coming and dropping out. Um, overall, they're coming, they're staying, they're graduating and continuing on. So as some of you know, of course, we have an early college high school. Um, on uh, or right next to our campus. So it allows those students who participate in our early college high school to earn up to 60 college level credits, tuition free. Um, so when they graduate high school, they earn not only their high school diploma, but also uh, about around 60 uh, college level courses of completion. And that is our last slide. So I wanna definitely say thank you for taking the opportunity in your busy evening. Um, to spend some time with us. Um, my information, as well as Ms. Shelvia Wright and Ms. Paula Holden, two of my other colleagues, um, are listed as well. Our contact information is listed at the bottom, admissions at desu.edu, and our phone number, 302-857-6351, 302-857-6351, is our contact information. And I know it is also listed on our, on the uh, student success website as well. Reach out to us with any additional questions that you may think of after the chat. So um, I know that uh, we have an opportunity. There are some institu institutions, um, instances where some students have asked questions in the chat. So um, if my colleague, Ms. Holden, can let me know if there are any questions that have been um, asked in the chat. That way we can just kind of share it with everyone just in case someone else might have the same question. Hi, Ms. Stokes. Um, I think we've covered the questions. Uh, there's only a few questions in the chat. Uh, if anyone has any more, they can drop some in. Okay, just in case, um, let's see. So someone did ask um, about their student, that they're applying and they're working on their essays. Um, can they still apply? So for Delaware State University, we actually do not require an essay for the admission submission. Now, if the student is applying to the honors program, they will require an essay, but that's a separate process. Um, but just in case, um, you can actually, we, we recommend for students, you don't have to submit all pieces at the same time of your admissions application because things happen and sometimes you don't have every piece there. But we always recommend starting with completing that online admissions application and then you can submit your transcripts and your test scores at a later date. Um, you can upload them to the admissions application. Um, I know Ms. Holden put in the chat, um, our, our email address to send documents is actually admissionsdocs, admissions, D-O-C-S at D-E-S-U dot E-D-U. And you can actually send your transcripts and test scores and high school transcripts there as well. But again, we highly recommend that you do the online admissions application first so that at least we receive that. So when you send in those additional pieces and documents, we can just add that to your admissions application. I do see a couple more questions, Ms. Stokes. Um, one question is, can you explain the information systems degree? Information systems. So, Essentially, that's within our computer science umbrella. Um, I, I would, I, I'm not going to even open my mouth and say that I'm an expert in that area. I am not. Um, I definitely recommend, I know for all of the attendees, we're going to send you an invite to our open house in November. Um, but 
and that will give you the opportunity to plug and talk to our computer science um, chair, um, Dr. Rasamni. But for information, it's essentially it's our, our, our computer science, information technology, information systems, it's all lumped into one. So essentially, of course, your first two years, you'll be doing general education classes. And when you get into your the end of your sophomore year or your junior year, that's where actually where you're going to dive deeper into doing programming and, and, and doing those specific academic majors uh, for that particular major. But one thing that we can do is drop the email address for our chair um, for our computer science program, Dr. Rasamni. Sorry, and I'll put it in the chat. So sorry, I can't talk and type at the same time. So I'll type that in there for the student that did ask that. Ms. Holden, were there, uh, I think I see a few questions popping in there too. Yes, um, one question they want to uh, get a little bit more information about the honors program. Okay, so for our honors program, um, sorry, <laughs> can't do two things at once. Okay, so I just put in the chat the, um, the chair's information for um, computer science, information technology, information systems, the gamut of our technology academic program. Reach out, he's very, very approachable um, with your specific question for the program. He always schedules a time to chat, so it's pretty interesting. Um, so for our honors program, we always tell students that is a separate process. So the first process you need to do is the admissions online application. Then from there on our honors webpage, um, and again, if you go to our website or call our office directly, um, if you go to our website and you type in the search bar honors program, the information will come up for you. So it lets you know additional information about the program, contact information, and what the and what the um, criteria are to submit. So essentially what you'll need to submit is a separately is your high school transcript, a copy of that. Um, you have to submit letters of recommendation um, and a writing sample as well. I do know that those are a few pieces. So once you are, once you apply for admissions, you can actually do both at the same time, so it won't hurt you to do so. Um, for, so definitely start the admissions process first and then separately do the honors application process because one of the amenities is that you get to stay in the honors dorm you get special privileges on various aspects when it comes to being an honor student. Um, the honor society as well, you get those additional information. And you get to be a part of that smaller and elite group um, that our honors program provides for you. We have a, spe a, a special director um, for our honors program and she's amazing. She's, she really goes above and beyond sharing special opportunities for our honor students. So again, essentially the applying to the honors program is a separate process, but you do get those special amenities such as special living quarters. You get to register for classes earlier um, and additional like special events that are, that are just special to our honors program students. So um, definitely if you're interested in applying for our honors program, definitely head on over to our website and take a look at our honors program actual page so you can actually see what additional amenities that you do have as an, if you are admitted into the honors program. We have a couple of questions about open house. Uh, just wanted people to know that our open house is virtual and it will be held on Saturday, November the 14th at 11 a.m. And I dropped the registration link in the chat. And I don't see any more questions on my end. Sorry, I was trying to scroll to Oh, wait, there is one more, sorry. <laughs> um, I know you just spoke about the honors program. I know a student wants to know a little more about uh, what does the honors program entail? I guess okay. like the type of the courses, which are honors courses. So for that piece, it depends on the student. So it, it when you sit, if you're accepted, and let's say you are admitted to, into the honors program, it's not one set curriculum. It's based on your program. That's where it's going to change a little bit. And it's also based on your, your not only your program, but also kind of what path additionally you would like to take. So a computer science honors student, is, is their, their content of the honors level courses that they're going to take is going to be different than a biology honors student. Um, so it's, it's, we can't really say you'll take these specific courses. It's really going, it's really a one on one initial meeting that you have with your academic advisor that really tailors that specific honors program graduation to fit you as a student. So they make sure that your courses are spaced in a way that fits your lifestyle. 
um, especially if you're participating in extracurricular activities or you're working or you're doing special research um, external to your program to build your, build your portfolio. So that's going to be, that's going to depend upon your actual program, but it is tailored to fit you as a student. And I know also Ms. Holden has dropped in the chat uh, a link to our uh, Delaware State University campus tour. It's only about six or so minutes. Um, that way you can get a quick snapshot of it, additionally a little bit more about Delaware State University. Um, and it's also on our website as well, just in case you um, needed to kind of access that as well external from now. So I don't see anything else in the chat. I'm kind of staring and looking at the camera at the same time. Um, but just in case, if you think of any questions after this evening's presentation, definitely contact us at admissions at desu.edu. Give us a call, 302-857-6351, and we'll be happy to assist you. Um, I do see one question that just popped up. Um, in the chat, it doesn't go into detail about the dormitories, but if you go to our website, you can actually click on each of the dorms and you'll see some video or still shots of each of our dormitories and our on and off campus housing as well for our students. So thank you guys very much for taking the time out again in your seven o'clock to eight o'clock evening. Um, hopefully this has been informative to you. Um, we'll be more than happy to answer any additional questions that you reach out to our office with. And we thank you again. Thank you so much, Ms. Stokes and Ms. Holden for being with us tonight. Um, again, just for people on the call or watching the recording, there's a lot more information on our website as well, DelawareStudentSuccess.org. Um, please visit the Delaware State University website and reach out to them with specific questions. Um, I can tell you that admissions uh, officers are more than willing to talk to students and to families and answer questions, especially during this challenging time. Um, everybody, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty. And so please reach out with your questions and um, they will help you through the process. So use the resources that they, that they make available. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. I hope you um, can attend a webinar in the future. Just as a reminder, next Tuesday is one on financial aid and scholarships paying for college. So that would be a good one if you're thinking about attending college. So thank you so much and have a good evening. Good night.